Hi, my name is Albert Dunford, and in this video, we are going to be going over the new features and improvements of PSM version 2021B. In my opinion, this is a fairly major release. We've added a very important new set of features here uh, that I think has been will really be very impressive. Uh, the first one here is the analysis tools. So this is a new feature to PSIM. Uh, so you don't have to pay extra for this. This is the Monte Carlo tools, the sensitivity analysis tools, and the fault analysis tools. And let's have a little look at what these do. So uh, bear in mind, I will do a more detailed video covering this sort of stuff in much more detail, just trying to do an overview of everything here, uh, keep things spicy and entertaining. But this is a really important feature, I feel, which is gonna be really good for a lot of people. Uh, so what we've done here is I've loaded in this phase shift full bridge converter. For every parameter in this circuit, we can set up a distribution or a list of, of options to go through. So I'm sweeping the output capacitance here between 7 milli and 8 milli farads. We can do the DC bus. We'd get different, different distributions we can do here as well. And essentially what we can do then is define what we're going to look at. So in this case, I'm looking at the output voltage, overshoot, and the input current and RMS. We, there's lots of different options we can go through here. Uh, and all of these different waveforms can be picked up. And we can set the number of simulations to run. So that's just basically just going to run a whole bunch of simulations. And then over here, we're looking at the overshoot of the output voltage with simulations. I can group it versus load or DC bus or capacitance, whatever we want. Uh, switch it to the other one here, output, you know, so we can, again, relook at all those different things and different methods. We've got histogram plots. We've got all sorts of stuff that we can do if we really are keen with regards to this sort of thing. So this is the Monte Carlo. Now with the Monte Carlo analysis, if we start, the fun thing with this is each one of these simulations is a discrete simulation. So what we can do is uh, one of the unique features of PSIM or advantages of PSIM is that it will run the simulation as a discrete thread. So if you've got a lot of cores or multiple threading capabilities on your computer, we can run these simulations simultaneously. So if you run, schedule up 2000 simulations, basically PSIM will start scheduling them on open cores and will start running them simultaneously. So you should be able to churn through a lot of simulations really quickly this way. And we think this is a really powerful tool. Next up is the sensitivity tool. Again, we're looking at the same circuit at the background here. Uh, same sort of parameters we've loaded in here. So uh, resistance, load resistance, uh, DC bus, and capacitance here. And we're applying a percent variation to that. And then we've got a few different things we want to look at. And in this case, it's run a few simulations here and ranked the sensitivity to that change of that particular thing. Again, there's going to be a video dealing with this in more detail uh, a little bit later on here. And the last one here is the fault analysis tool. This one's also pretty fun. What we do here is we load in the circuit, again, the same full space shift full bridge, and we get to choose if we're gonna short circuit a couple nodes of a particular element. So we could introduce a short circuit across anything in here that we want, like the MOSFET or the input capacitance, or or we could introduce a parameter fault. So say we wanted the, we could set it up so that the with the capacitance change values or something like that, or the there's other things in here that could go to odd values. So, and then we get to choose uh, variables to look at. And basically we can say, okay, if this goes above this value or less than this value, we we can say that that's not a good, that's not good, uh, that we haven't passed our test or whatever it is. So we can set that up so we can look at all those different faults. And obviously with all of these simulations, the fault analysis, the sensitivity, or the Monte Carlo, we can choose to save the simulation results or not to save them. And then that allows you to go back and post analyze each simulation to see what's going on. Okay, so that's the analysis tools. Again, look for a more in-depth video on these features later on. Okay, the next feature or update is for the EMI design suite or the, the EMI design suite allows us to understand conducted emissions in our particular converter. And we have added support for three phase systems now. So here's a Vienna rectifier with a three phase input. We've added in the three phase listen here, the three phase signal analyzer, and there's a three phase EMI filter. And we can also see obviously over here, we've got listens for particular standards over here as well. Those are the single phase and the three phase ones over here as well. Uh, and this, the name of the game here is to allow you to start to understand the conducted EMI of your system. These are using our level two devices. 
And there's all these uh, common little cats scattered throughout over here as well. Uh, also, there's another important uh, update to the filter itself. So if we look at the EMI filter, if we look at what's going on back here, we are now designing filters for several common topologies. So this is a new thing. We're, we're supporting the L-type, the Pi-type, and the T-type filter designs. And we're also now including into that filter design the parasitics that you say. So if there's the common mode um, coupling, the common mode capacitances here, the ESRs on all these elements are all there. And so basically what you're defining is how much attenuation you need at a particular frequency, and then we will come up with that filter design, either single stage or two stage, depending on what's needed. And you get to select whichever topology you want. Okay, so that's the EMI design suite. Again, we'll look at a more in-depth video on this feature too, look for that one. Okay, next up is an addition to the power supply design suite or support for the resonant converter design of a CLLC converter. So that is CLLC. And this is the exact same as our additional tools. Again, we're using our proprietary closed form solution to come up with these steady state waveforms through an, uh, our input wizard here, our little calculation wizard. So you look at any operating point and see what those waveforms are gonna look like. And we can also do the design curve tool here. So you can look at varying K and Q, so the inductance ratio and the uh, quality factor and look at what that particular gain is gonna be. Also recall that the start frequency here is the beginning of the zero voltage switching range. And we can see a resonant frequency here. So switch changing, it says here, different inductance ratio, well, quality factor is fixed, and then different quality factor, well, inductance is fixed, and you can obviously change these and calculate this. So this is great tools for the design of your CLLLC. And then obviously we can, uh, this is open loop, so we can come back over here and close the loop in here if we want to and all that kind of stuff, do AC sweeps, all that sort of thing can be done with PSIM, so you can start working on closing the loop on your resident converters this way. Okay, that's it for the this one and there'll be more in-depth feature or, or tutorial video on this one coming up as well. Okay, so next up is some additions to the machine modeling capabilities. So originally we had our six phase PMSM and which had a phase shift between the windings. And now we will have one that has a zero degree phase shift. So that's been added. We also are now allowing for a six phase PMSM to be simulated with our JMAG link with the MAG coupler RT module. So you can now do that. And you can also simulate a synchronous reluctance machine with the JMAG RT link. So that's a six phase synchronous reluctance machine can be simulated with the with the FEA link with JMAG. And there's a minor update to the uh, PMSMs where we've now, if you're familiar with our high frequency models, which allow you to put a high frequency termination impedance onto the, uh, for the Thevenin equivalent of that machine. So we have a cable between the inverter and the machine. You get the proper uh, high frequency characteristics and interactions but on there to look at ringing and overshoots on the terminals and things like that. Uh, we now have one that has voltage sources underneath. So if you're familiar with machine modeling, the underlying models are usually current sources or voltage sources. You use one in particular instances. Uh, now we've added one that has voltage sources as the underlying model type. So that's some additions to the machine models and motor drive models. Okay, next up we have a usability improvement to the thermal module. So now when you open up this device and we wanna find that in the, in the database, if you go again, click on the dots there and click go to device, it'll automatically pull that out of the database and you can see what the conduction losses are, the various curves, the switching loss curves and all that kind of information is there, what the cow or the foster network is for the junction to case thermal network. So that's all there and easy to get to. So that is a go-to device has been added to easily allow you to jump to that device in the database. Okay, so that's that one. Next up is support for the Sigma Delta Frequency Modulator. Uh, this has been added to two of the targets, the F2837X and the F2804X targets. It is not available for the other targets, even if those particular processors have this feature. We have not gone and, and updated the peripheral set for those targets, it's only the new ones. Uh, so there'll be another tutorial that obviously goes into this in more detail, but there is now support for the Sigma Delta Frequency Modulator for the two, the 37X and the 004X target. There's another uh, feature to go over here. So in the SPICE link, 
if we are running a or using our spice link, that means you're running an LT spice simulation for the PSIM schematic that you've put down. And uh, we're now allowing you to check syntax. So obviously, all spice languages are not compatible with each other. There's slight changes in syntaxes with each other. So this allows you to import a P spice uh, set of spice instructions and click check. And it'll look through that and find what isn't compatible with LT spice. And if you're lucky, it'll make a suggestion on what can be changed for that syntax uh, to allow you to ensure that all of your spice syntax is LT spice compatible. So that is the spice netlick checks. And I'll go through a more detailed example of this in, a, in another video, a specific video. So look for that one, okay, if that's of interest to you. Okay, we're coming towards the end here. So another really important update, in my opinion, is the addition of the FMU module. So this is an add-on module that you can get, which allows you to export your PSIM schematic to be an FMU or a functional mock-up interface compatible co-simulation feature. So basically you need to, you, you define the nodes or the signals that are passing in and out, and then you generate the FMU. There's a few options here. Again, this, this feature set will warrant its own tutorial video. We'll get into that. And then what we're doing is we're exporting a co-simulation model. So that means you can run a co-simulation with anything that supports the FMU import co-simulation. So that's this stuff here. So there's a, fairly exhaustive list. We'll link that down in the description for you to have a look at, but it's the FMU import co-simulation stuff that you can link a PSIM simulation to now. Okay, I've got some new elements here uh, to go through. The first one here we'll go through is the bus bar element. This one is essentially uh, a resistor and inductor uh, under the hood, uh, but it's it's set up so that it looks like a proper bus bar element in your schematic, so you're not confused as to what these might be. So essentially, bus bars are typically very small values, and this allows you to put that in nicely and neatly to make sense to everyone who looks at the schematic. Uh, the next one is this coax cable element. So this is a distributed cable model uh, where we're basically you put in the per unit the the values per per unit length. Uh, how long that cable is going to be, and then how many sections you want to model that cable in, and that'll be put in for a coax cable. Uh, the next one is this uh, turn-on delay. This is, allows you to easily put in some dead time for a uh, switch, uh, externally defined. There's lots of ways of doing that. This is just another one we've added. Uh, another fairly interesting update here is on the set reset flip-flop. Obviously, we've had a set reset flip-flop since the beginning of time. Uh, but what we didn't have was this ability to set if the set or the reset was the dominant signal. So before, uh, if both of them went high, uh, there it wasn't a used state. And now we're able to set whether or not the set or the reset's going to be take precedence when that happens. So that's been something that's added. And then I've, there's a opt, opt coupler that's bidirectional as well added. And then some additions to uh, space vector control elements. So we've added in this alpha beta to gating waveform. So this, this block is equivalent to this. So you don't need to put all this stuff down to put this on. So you just connect this to your inverter right away, this two level inverter for three phase. Or if you wanted to get to three level, there's this one here. And this basically implements all of this under the hood. So we go from alpha beta directly to gating waveforms without having to put all this stuff in. Okay, so those are just some usability things that we've done. And then uh, we've been updating our application notes. So come and browse up to here. Bunch of application notes in here. Obviously, there's one covering the new analysis tools and, and some of the uh, resident converter stuff and EMI stuff we've been doing. And you can easily link to those particular simulations through this menu as well. So have a look at those. And with that, that's the end of this video. So thank you so much for supporting PSIM. Thank you so much for paying attention all the way through. Remember to keep in touch with us through our newsletter or our mailing lists or follow us on social media or whatever it is you want to do to stay in touch. Uh, you could also stay in touch with us view, via this page here. Maybe you've got to this video off of this page. Uh, so we're always remember to check things out here. This list will always be updating with new features and, and videos and webinars that are coming up. So don't forget to check that out, okay? So I will be hosting webinars on this, sub, on this topics uh, and there'll be extra tutorial videos coming out. So if you're coming back to this video in a few months time for, uh, from now, have a look through all our resources for the webinars that we've hosted on it and for the dedicated tutorial videos on the specific features uh, that warrant it, okay? So that's it for this video. Again, thank you so much uh, and check back for more videos.